Life is like a jigsaw, where would you start? You think you got the picture like it's written on your heart You lay out all the pieces one by one But if you stare at it too closely, the answer never comes Shane Fallon, thank you so much for chatting to RT10 today. Thank you, thanks for having me. What I loved about this album is it's just so real, it's honest, but above everything it's just so positive. Tell me about the writing process. The writing process was something that was very, very new to me. You know, it was something that I didn't know even if I could do it really. Like, you know, it was the first, you know, the, the record label said to me, would you like to write songs? I was like, I'd love to, but don't sign me off the back of writing songs because I haven't really done it before. Um, but yeah, I found it to be a very, very relaxing process, very easy process. Um, you know, I found writing songs quite easy because I think I was writing about stuff that was I suppose true stories, it was in my life, it was you know, about Gillian or about my kids or about just being positive like you said. And there are an awful lot of love related songs on the album, how does your wife feel when she listens back to these and knows that it's, it's obviously about her? Yeah, she's, uh, uh, Gillian's quite a shy person, you know, but um, you know, she's glad that I'm writing songs obviously, she's glad that I'm, I'm I suppose I've found that I can do that in, in my life um, and in my career, it's, it's a great thing to be able to do. Um, but yeah, she's a bit, you know, not embarrassed is the wrong <laughs> word, but I think she's a bit like, okay, you know, one of the songs is called About You, you know, and it's like when you sing it, it's about you. But it's, uh, you know, I think she's, I suppose, she's flattered in a way too, you know, um, being Irish, trad music is huge, you know, in my life, always has been. Um, and I wanted to have a bit of that Irish trad feel, you know, I, I kept saying to everybody when I was going to write with these people, I, I hadn't met any of them hardly before, and I was saying, you know, if we can sing this in a pub, and we can sing this in front of a massive crowd, it's a really good song. How do you feel about going touring and just being solo and not in a band this time? Do you know what, Laura, I've no, I've no, I've nothing to compare it to. You know, as in, you can say you can compare it to Westlife, but I've nothing to compare it to, as in when I was in the band, it's completely different to being in a band. We recently saw you on the X Factor yeah. and you got quite emotional mm. in one part and this is where we saw the real you, it was so genuine and it made viewers at home go, oh my god, what are these people going through and it kind of... This, yeah, I, th I think it is, it was, it was actually, yeah, it was, it was mad, you know, when I was there, it was, um, it's a very, a, a very stressful, emotional kind of moment when people mm. are auditioning because, you know, it's their two minutes for, the, you know, the, it's their biggest audition of their life. Yeah. Um, they're standing in front of me and Louis or whoever, and I think it's just the whole the whole emotion is building up there. It's not just they're they're looking forward to it for a week or two. Their whole life they're waiting to be on the show. Like the last ten years, they're probably watching on a Sunday. I do that, and then they're there. Their whole life at that moment depends on that one mm. performance. Um, so yeah, and, and I think Nicholas thought that he didn't deliver like he should have. He just broke down the poor kid. He was just literally in it. And he didn't even see half of it. He was in a state of hysterics. Like literally just, you know. Um, and I just felt for him. I don't know, maybe he reminded me a bit of me when I was younger. You know, I know what it's like to be in that position when mm. you're auditioning and you think this is the biggest moment in my life. I auditioned for Simon Cowell, I auditioned for Louis. Um, you know, and I think, um, yeah, it just he just got me. I think for Louis, it was just, he was, He's my, he's my Mr. Positive, as I call him now, you know, because especially in the last couple of years, he was very, very, um, very supportive when I needed it most. He was really, really there for me and really, I don't know, just kept me focused and positive all the time about my career because, you know, he came out of Westlake, nothing certain. There's no guarantee of a record deal. There's no guarantee of anything. Um, so I suppose I needed it a lot and he really supported me. He really, um, you know, Nothing's, nothing's a problem, like, you know, no matter what happens, even after all the stuff that had happened to me, like, you know, I was literally feeling, I was right down there. He was like, it's okay, we can fix it, you know, and everything's like, nothing's a problem, you know, it'd be worse if you lost your voice. Like this, he kept reminding me this, you still have your voice, you still have your wife, you still have your kids. That's all you need, I look after the rest, you know. So, obviously my album's coming out in a couple of weeks, um, the 1st of November, I'm back, I'm doing the Late Late Show in a couple of weeks, actually. Brilliant. Looking forward to that. The fans, I dedicated the album to, to the fans, you know, and I, the, I called it You and Me because it is, it's them and me, you know, it's me and my fans making this hopefully something good out of this and over the next couple of years and see where it ends up and but without them there's no point in me making albums, you know, it's, that's as simple mm. as that, so yeah, they've been amazing.